So I think it's good to try by yourself first. So here is uh, exercise one. So it's the simple one. Uh, basically, it's about the university offering the course. So the university has a large number of course, and attributes of a course can be course number, course name, and the units. And each course may have one or more different course as a prerequisite, or may have no prerequisite. So basically, it's about if you want to take this course, you have to take another course, something like that. So yeah, so basically, uh, it's about representing the prerequisite information uh, in, the, uh, in, a, in the year diagram. The first thing is this. So basically, here is the business event and the business rules. So everything is here. So you have to infer the ident uh, entity first. So what can be the main entity which you want to store information? So as you see from this example, it's all about the course. So the course can be the entity here. And we want to store information about the course. And the detailed information we want to store about course is basically course number, course name, and the units. So we can store that information. So the course uh, number and the course name and the units. So we can store these as attributes in the course entity. And then we have to think about what can be the primary key, So which is a course number. So we can put underline here to represent that this is a primary key. So course number is unique for every course. And then now we have to think about the relationship here. So each course may have one or more different courses as a prerequisite. So basically, it's that one course can be prerequisite of another course. So we can say that it's a course is a pre requisite of so one course can be prerequisite of another course. So we can make this a unary relationship. And the last thing we can do here is the defining cardinality. So if you look at this rule here, basically it says that the business rule says that each course may have one or more different course as a prerequisite. So you can think from the course as a perspective and then prerequisite course as a perspective, right? So one course, so let's see. So each course may have one or more different course as a prerequisite. So I am a course, then I can have maximum many other courses as a prerequisite or may have no prerequisite. So zero is also possible. So we can put it there. So similarly, a particular course may be a prerequisite for any number of course or may not be prerequisite for any other course. So if I'm the prerequisite course, uh, there might be many other courses which require me and there can be zero course which require me as a prerequisite. So the cardinality will be like this. Basically, it's uh, uh, based on this relationship. Uh, we can call this as uh, many to many uh, unary relationship. So that's the solution for the exercise one, basically. OK, so that's there. So let's go to the. Uh, the next exercise. So let's try this too. So it's similar. So the college course may have one or more scheduled section. And also basically, one thing is this. Basically, it's the relationship between course and section. And what I mean is this. So there are multiple courses like DSME 6751 and DSME I don't know, 2051, something like this. There are many different courses in the university. And there are also many different sections. So for DMS uh, ME 6751, we have a, a BA section, IAB section, IA section, something like this. So for this same, we can have a BA section, IA section, or something like this, right? So the main question here you have to notice is this. For the course, using the course number, you can identify each course because there is a unique number. But for this section offering, we cannot simply use a section number, right? Because the section number IA, it can be also used here. So by using only IA, you are not able to uh, uniquely choose this course from another course. So that's something you have to notice. And based on that, 
let's uh, try to solve this uh, question. It's about the course and the section. So we can uh, make the course as an entity first to store information about course ID, course name, and the units. And we can also design the section as an entity to store section information, uh, which includes section number and semester ID, like this. So basically, we have the course entity and the section entity. So for the course, we have a course ID as a primary key and course name and the units as an attribute. For the section, we have a section number and the semester ID. Also, actually, I didn't talk about semester ID, but semester ID is something like this. Uh, so basically, this one is a 2021 T1. And so this BA from DSM 6751 will be offered here. And also 2020 T1 like this, right, in other semester two. And we should be able to identify each section offering, basically. So the problem is this. For the section entity, using section number only, we are not able to identify this section from another section you are taking. So this section you are taking, but there's another section with the IA, but you are not taking that. You may not take that. Then also we have a CMS ID information here. By using this alone, we are also uh, we are also we also cannot identify one section you are taking from another section you are not taking, because there are many courses offered in different uh, semester. So basically, currently, by each attribute here alone, we are not able to make a primary key, which uniquely identify each section from another. So what you can do is that you have to use multiple attributes as a primary key. So you may remember that last week when I talked about primary key, I said that one field can be a primary key. Also, it's possible that a combination of multiple fields can be a primary key. So in this case, because each field cannot be used as a primary key, we can use multiple fields together as a primary key. So to identify this specific section, we have to use DSME 6751 which is course ID together with IA, which is section number, together with semester ID, which is 2021 T1. So we have to use all these three together to identify each section uniquely from others. So in this case, we don't have the course ID here, so we can bring it from the course table, so we can add it here. So course ID, section number, semester ID, these three attributes are used together as a primary key. So we underline all these three. And then we make a relationship between these two, that course offered a section, basically. And then we can identify the cardinality. So when course offers a section for each course, basically, uh, there can be many sections, including zero, if the course is designed, but it, it's not offering any section, that's possible. And from the section's perspective, if the section offering exists, there should be existing course uh, based on that. So basically, the sample solution for this question will be like this. The main point here is uh, identifying primary key of the section entity here. So here, another one. So uh, let's try this. Uh, basically, it's about representing uh, how to design database using ER diagram, which will be able to store information about employee and its relationship with the project. We want to keep the information about the employees, right? So employee can be the entity. And we want to store employee ID, name, address, birth date as attribute. Uh, and also, we have a project information we want to keep. So project can be entity, and it includes a project ID, project name, start date. Uh, basically, those are attributes we want to store about the project. And then we can make the relationship. So let's make the employee entity first here. So employee entity is here, and the project entity is here. And then 
attributes of an employee is employee ID, uh, name, address, and the date of birth. For project, we have a project ID, project name, and the start date, like this. So employee ID can be the primary key because it's the identifier. And project ID also can be the primary key for the project entity. And now it's all about employee is assigned to project. So we can make the relationship, which is uh, assigned to relationship here. So employee is assigned to the project. Let's look at the business rule to determine the cardinality. So each employee may be assigned to any number of projects, including to none. So from the employee's perspective, they may be assigned to any number of projects, many projects, including zero, minimum zero. And project must have at least one employee assigned. So from the project perspective, there should be at least one employee assigned and may have any number of employees assigned, which means many. So basically, this is a binary many-to-many -many relationship. And the last sentence is this. An employee's billing rate may vary by project, and the company wish to record the applicable billing rate, basically this, for each employee when assigned to a particular project. So billing rate is something like this. So let's say that uh, we have an employee here, and we have the project, like this. So employee 1 is assigned to project 1. Then we want to assign the billing rate. Oops. So billing rate is like uh, maybe he get 20% of a commission, something like that. Employee 1 is also assigned to project 2. He may get 30% commission from this project. And employee 2 is assigned to project 1. Then he can get like a 10% commission from this project, something like that. So we want to keep this billing rate information. So we have to think about where we can keep this billing rate information. So if we make a billing rate attribute here in the employee entity, uh, it doesn't make sense, right? Because employee one may be assigned to many projects, and for each project he's assigned, the billing rate is not the same. But in the database system, uh, each attribute for employee, uh, each, so basically for each employee, the attribute can have only one data. So we cannot put it here. And how about project here? So for the same project, there might be multiple different employees. And their billing rate is also different. So we cannot save here too. So we cannot save here in the employee entity. We cannot save here in the project entity. So you have to think about the dependency. So where this billing rate information depends on. So it depends on employee and project. So given a certain employee assigned to a certain project, we have billing rate information. So that is basically this many-to-many -many relationship. So this many-to-many -many relationship keeps information about employee assigned to a certain project. So we can keep the billing rate in this case here in this many-to-many -many relationship. So this is something important. So one thing you have to notice is this. So when you have a conceptual ER diagram like this, when you have a one-to-many or one-to-one -one relationship, it cannot have any attribute. So that's the usual rule. So usually, relationship cannot have attribute because it's a simply relationship. However, when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, it is OK to include attribute there because uh, which actually this uh, we are going to talk with the next week, when, uh, next time, when we talk about how to implement this into the relational model. But this many-to-many -many relationship should have, should have this kind of assignment information. So this kind of assignment information should be kept somewhere because it's many-to-many. -many. So that information will be stored in this many-to-many -many relationship. And when we implement the database, the many-to-many -many relationship will become a table. That means that it will have a space to store additional information. So that's why when you have many to many relationship in the ER diagram, you are able to add additional attribute like this. 
So in this case, the billing rate can be added into assign the relationship because it's a many-to-many -many relationship that has the assignment information between these two entities. So that's a, that was the basically uh, main uh, point of this exercise three. Okay, so let me go to the next one. So this is the last exercise. In exercise four, basically what we have to do is this. So in every sem at the end of every semester, basically the university will uh, make this kind of grade report for every student. <coughs> uh, basically, uh, it will include the student information, course information, and the grade information about that student. Uh, uh, basically for those courses that students took during the semester. And the university wants to make the, design the database uh, to store the necessary information to make this kind of a grade report. So we have to think about what kind of information exists here first. Uh, first of all, let's just see this. Um, and there are some business rules we have to be careful, like uh, assume that each course is taught by only one instructor. Um, the courses are not necessarily taught by the same instructor. So we need this rule later when we determine the cardinality. Okay, so what kind of information exists in here and what kind of uh, uh, entity we have to make to keep the information. So first of all, it's the information about the student grade report. So we have uh, uh, basically the student information here, right? So we have to make a student entity to keep this student information. And another information is here course, the student to take the course, right? So we have this course information here. So we can design the course entity to store course information in the attribute. And we have instructor information, so we can make another entity for the instructor to store each instructor's information. And then uh, here, the semester, we can also design the semester as an entity to store semester-related information. So the grade is here, but grade, we are going to talk about this later. So grade doesn't need to be the entity, actually, because uh, uh, it's just one like a letter, basically. But let's talk more about that later. So let's first design a student entity, semester entity, instructor entity, and the course entity. So that can be... Uh, don't like this. So we can design student entity and student entity will include student ID as a primary key and also we have a name address major for the student. So the student name and student major and address like this. So we can keep that as an attribute and there will be a course So for the course, we have a course ID as a primary key, and earlier we had a course title. And there was a semester. So for the semester, we can simply make a semester ID and use that as a primary key. Uh, there could be other attributes, but in the grade report there is nothing, so we'll keep it as it is. And also we can have a instructor entity here. Uh, so we can make a staff ID, which is not shown in the grade report, but we can make it and use it as a primary key. And we can have an instructor name as an attribute, like this. Okay, so now it's the grade report. So we have to think about how student will get grade. So basically, student will get a grade after taking the course. So we can make the take relationship here. So student enrolled in a certain semester will take a course in that semester. So we can make the tunnel relationship here. So, and then let's determine the cardinality here. So for first of all here, we have to think from the student, a student, in a semester. So student in a, a student in a certain semester 
how many courses he can take. So maximum, he can take many classes, right? And minimum, if he's uh, not, he's not in a semester, but he's doing something else, then maybe he may not take any course. So it, but this one is actually based on the business rule. It can be this, or it can be many and at least one. So it's based on the university rule, but it's not specified in the exercise, so either is fine. And let's think about here. So a student taking a course. So how many times he can take that course? So a student taking a specific course, how many semesters he can do that? Um, it's also based depending on the university rule. So if a university doesn't allow taking the same course again in the future, it will be only one and one, right? A student taking a certain course, he can take it only one and one semester. Uh, if the university allows taking the course again, if uh, he got really bad grade and he wants to change it, then he can take it again. If the university allows that, it can be one to many. So either is okay. And here, it's a perspective of a course offered in a certain semester. So a certain course in a certain semester, how many students can take it? So many students can take it, and we can say that there should be at least one student who take it so that the course can be offered. So also it's based on the university rule, but uh, I'll just keep it this. So basically, this uh, take relationship is a tonally relationship. And as you see here, maximum is many. Here, maximum cardinality is many. And here, it can be one and many, right? So when tonally relationship has more than one maximum many cardinality, we call this a, is, as a many-to-many -many tonally relationship. So it has a many here and many here. So we can call this as many-to-many, -many, even though here is one. Okay, so that's one thing. And also, course is taught by the instructor. So we had that business rule earlier in the exercise here. So it says uh, each course is taught by one instructor, like this. And uh, so, let's, so basically, course is taught by instructor in a certain semester. So it's again tonal relationship. So we have to think about the cardinality here. So here, it's from the perspective of the course in a certain semester. So course offered in a certain semester, how many instructors can teach it? And earlier in the business rule, it can taught by one instructor. So one and only one. And here, from the perspective of an instructor in a certain semester, how many courses he can teach? He may not teach anything if it's not his teaching semester. And he can teach many courses. That's also possible. And here, now perspective from the instructor uh, teaching a certain course. So there is an instructor teaching a certain course. How many semesters he can teach? Uh, he can teach across many semester, and it can be. Uh, and if he teach you course, it can be one or zero. And it doesn't matter. So this can be this or this. Okay. So that will be all the cardinality. So we represented everything. We represented the entity, relationship, and the cardinality. There is one thing missing right now, uh, which is basically the grade information. So we have to think about uh, the dependency of this grade information. How grade is determined? So grade is uh, given based on a certain student taking a certain course in a certain semester. It doesn't matter which instructor, right? It doesn't matter. It's about course, semester, and student. Uh, student. So basically, that information is kept here. That assignment information is kept in this many-to-many -many tonal relationship. Uh, student taking a certain course in a certain semester, and it's many-to-many -many relationship. So we are able to add attribute here. So we are going to put grade attribute into this tonally many-to-many -many relationship. So that's it. So that's the uh, final ER diagram to keep all the information from the exercise for basically. 
So I prepared one more exercise. So this will be last exercise in this class. But here is exercise five. So let's uh, do this. So basically, uh, it's about where to store this information. So uh, it's about, uh, so basically we want to record the teaching score information. Uh, specifically, we want to record the score of each course taught by each professor in a given semester. So every semester, there are multiple courses, and those courses are taught by the professor. And after teaching a course, in the end of the semester, the professor will also get the teaching score from uh, students, basically. So we want to know where to store this score information in this ER diagram. And basically, this ER diagram is about professor teach a course in a semester. And the second information we want to store is ever uh, average score. So we also calculate average score of each professor in a given semester to let them know how good they did and how uh, okay they did. And also average score by each professor. So across the semester, professor teach many courses. So what is the average of all the courses you have taught so far for each professor? And the number four is the average score across all the courses taught by all the professors in a given semester. So every semester, there are multiple courses offered by multiple professors. And when we average all, what is the average in that semester? And number five is the average score of each professor in a given year. So there are five uh, aggregated uh, fields we want to add it into this year diagram. So the most important thing here is this. Again, when you store aggregated field or any field into the ER diagram, you, you have to think about the dependency. So where this information depends on. The first one is score. So teaching score will be given to a certain course taught by a certain professor in a given semester. So for a professor teaching a certain course in a certain semester, he will get the score. So basically that is here in the teaching relationship. It, it's about a certain course taught by a certain professor in a certain semester. So it's a tonal relationship that is here. So we can store the number one, which is a score of each course taught by a professor in a given semester here. And the second one is the average score of each professor in a given semester. So currently we don't have a, uh, this information depends on professor and semester, but we don't have that relationship here, so we can make it. So we can create professor teach in a certain semester. So professor teach across many semester. Uh, each semester, there are many professor. So we can store that information here. So it will be average score of a certain professor in each semester. So basically, if we teach three course, it will be in a certain semester, it will be aggregated and stored here. And number three is average score by each professor. So basically, he teaches many courses across many semesters. We aggregate that into average score, and we want to store for each professor. So that can be stored here. For each professor, we can have average score. And the number four is the average score in a given semester. So in every semester, there are multiple professors, and we want to aggregate that information and store it. So it depends on the semester, so we can store here. And the last one is the average score of each professor in a given year. So in each time entity, because it depends on year and professor, and we don't have a year here. So we can create year time entity with a year as a primary key. And we can create the relationship. So there are many year and there are many professor. And we can store that information here. Average score of each professor in a given year like this. So basically that's the yeah, final solution for the exercise five. So this exercise is designed to understand basically how attribute can be stored in a different places.